to my lecture of stripping off your insecurities one garment at a time. <coughs> First of all, my name is um, uh, Karina Carson, Fifi on stage. I've been doing burlesque for three years now, and this is my personal story on how I went from a bulimic, self-bullying, insecure person to the one I am today, um, narcissistic, self-loving, yeah, I don't know, I have a crush on myself, can't help it. Um, you can take the next one. And I'm also a learning disability nurse. I'm a body positivist, failed stand-up comedian, and a burlesque artist. I'm also, as you can see, obviously, I'm fat. Um, what I'm here to tell you today is it doesn't matter. I'm completely fine with it. But I have, together with so many else, um, wanted to be skinny. Um, and I think that's the biggest wish for very a lot of women, to become skinnier. Doesn't matter how skinny. There's always something they want to change. I think that's a terrible wish. Um, I made that wish myself. And, oh, thank you. And I uh, wanted to be skinny so much, I developed an eating disorder. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of men uh, following um, this trend as well. Sorry, my head does not work. Okay, next one. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about what body positivism is. I'm not fighting for the right to be fat. I think um, we should accept all bodies. There's no ideal body. Uh, body positivism is all about accepting who you are um, and develop a good mental health, um, which is related to your self-image. Too many, I think, treat your uh, bodies as um, body issues as the symptoms. Like, I'm fat, I want to do something about it. And that's fine, but you have to have your mental health with you as well, because I have friends who lost weight, gained weight, they had boob jobs, they're still unhappy because they only did treat the actual thing. They didn't treat, treat, treat sorry, what's in here. You also have to accept how others live their life and the way they look, because I mean really, it's none of our business, is it? How I, I have nothing to do with your health. I shouldn't care, I should care about me. Um, and I think the most important one is don't body shame yourself. Where, <clears throat> because all the nasty things you say in the mirror to yourself, I really hope you wouldn't say that to a person you met on the street. Um, so I think it just stop it. Say nice things to yourself in the mirror, say nice things to everyone else, um, and save the compliments you get. Um, when I was 16, my mother-in-law at the time, <coughs> She um, told me that if her son could choose a new girlfriend, uh, she would be tall, she would be blonde, and she would be skinny. So, everything I'm not. Um, and then, this is actually kind of hard to talk about. Then she handed me an exercise program and told me to eat less. So I was 16. And also, I had a lot of bullying before then about my weight. It was like, you know what? You could have been so pretty if you weren't so fucking fat. I remember a boy in my class telling me that. Um, so I, that was the beginning of my, um, me being a bulimic. And it was quite traumatic for me as a 16-year-old girl with all the insecurities to hear that. So I started to throw up everything I ate. I threw away my lunch pack. I started exercising at night so my parents wouldn't know what I was up to. Um, after a while, the relationship ended and I moved um, into my, for myself. Um, and I used all my money on food. Really, I'm an economic wreck because of that time. I spent all my money on food so I could throw it up again. Um, and the feeling you have when you do this um, both the eating and the throwing up bit. You're uh, standing in front of the toilet with your finger in your throat and you know 
you shouldn't do this, this is stupid. Um, you're gonna destroy your organs and you still do it. You can't stop it because, oh God, I have to, I need to be skinny. I need to be pretty. Um, my eating disorder went on for about 10 years. Uh, and I used to laugh at it and calling it a disturbing kind of hobby. Um, since I thought to myself I wasn't sick enough. So it wasn't until I had a conversation with um, the leader of the Norwegian Eating Disorder, actually last year, um, I realized that there's nothing halfway when it comes to an eating disorder. <laughs> um, I also learned that it's actually a lot of fat people who think uh, the way I did. Like, since I don't lose any weight, I'm obviously not sick. Um, and I would like to say that if, if you are sick, or if you have a troublesome relationship with your body, contact someone, please. It's horrible. And the National Norwegian Eating Disorder Organization is just across the street. Um, I would also like to encourage you all to find some kind of art, maybe burlesque, um, that inspires you and lets you be you. Um, I want you to drown yourself in that kind of art and learn to love yourself um, for your abilities and what you can do. Um, and love yourself for who you are as a person, not number on the scale. I hear I'm switching up really between British and American, sorry. Um, I'm not saying that changing this mindset is an easy task, it will take time and it will be a different kind of journey for everyone. And it will be obstacles along the way. Um, I'm not really sure what happened. When I was 27, I found out there was a burlesque class in Oslo. So naturally, I moved closer to the city and took a stripping class. What I learned, um, standing there alongside 12 other women, sweaty, every sizes uh, and shapes, um, was that everyone has complexes. And everyone can feel insecure at times. Even the most beautiful girl in the class, um, she had issues on being too skinny. And that was really an eye-opener for me. Um, and it helped me realize, maybe it's not me, maybe it actually is a society. Um, and if you think about all the bodies you see in the media all the time, um, I, it's no wonder we want to look the same, because we all we only see one type of body. Um, and I think that's the photoshopped ideal body. So we're constantly, constant, sorry, constantly trying to fit into a picture of a body that does not actually exist. I usually say we're trying to compare ourselves with Photoshop, and that's not healthy. Um, so as I said, burlesque is a beautiful art form where everybody can fit in. So I'm expecting to see all of you in my shows <laughs> on stage. Um, so it's no matter what body type you have, uh, you can be skinny, you can be fat, you can have small boobs, big boobs, you can be a man, um, you can be disabled, there's no limits. Um, a very common myth is actually uh, you can't do burlesque if you're skinny, because you don't have anything to shake and shimmy. That's a lie. Um, we have room for everyone. When I started taking the classes, I had no intentions of being on stage. I wanted it to be my little secret, um, like something I could look back and think, my God, I did that crazy dance class once. Um, but a couple of the girls I danced with, they persuaded me to join, um, join a show, and I was hooked. <laughs> um, poor narcissist. Um, the feeling of being on stage, um, it was like I was meant to be there. Um, I had always been a fatty and fatty, funny, fatty, and I actually tried doing stand-up communion for a while, but it didn't, didn't work. I have just felt worse because the only things people actually were laughing at was when I trash talked myself, and I went off stage, people were laughing, but I felt miserable. I was the sad clown. Um, but in burlesque, I felt empowered, um, and I felt like I had nothing to be ashamed of, um, the audience cheered me on, um, they understood what I wanted to say, and a lot of people actually came up to me 
after the show and say they felt empowered by this cake act. Um, oh, um, through this wonderful art, um, like I said, I find myself in what I believe in. I gain confidence in myself and being me in my own body, uh, not comparing myself to everyone else. Um, and what I've, but what I've learned through doing burlesque, holding lectures, and being a spokesperson for body positivism is that um, confident fatties really pisses people off. <laughs> um, I got so much hate mail. Um, comments online and people are shouting shit at me across the street. Um, and people want me to die. Um, they make fun of me. Yeah. And I actually think that boils down to the fact that I'm not willing to put on the role as, well, accept my place as a shameful, insecure, and constantly dieting person. I mean, these are not the worst. This is just, yeah. I deleted the worst ones. Um, people who are also supportive can say things like, oh, well, as long as you're healthy. Um, while others can say things like, you're not healthy and you will die before the age of 40. Um, I don't think I owe anyone to show them my health certificate, and so the, you don't either. And as long as those people are not my doctor, I want them to keep, just keep their mouth shut. Um, which brings me over to body shaming in general. Um, I think we've called people out for the weirdest reasons. And I feel that as soon as someone does something or show that they appreciate themselves, no matter what size, um, someone is very quickly to shut them down. Um, not everyone. There's a lot of good feedback as well. Um, but I think it takes just one nasty comment and you... you went out in the morning feeling just fantastic. One nasty comment and all day is you're feeding yourself with all these monsters. Um, I, and I, it's not that we don't, um, we shouldn't handle criticism, but it needs to be con constructive. And writing an email to someone and telling them they don't deserve to live because they're fat, that's not constructive. Um, also, when people write or say all these things, um, I'm not the only one affected by it. I'm not sure they even know that I'm reading it. Um, what bothers me is there can be a 16-year-old kid reading it and feel affected by it. Um, and I think that's a really scary thought. Online bullying is harmful and we need to see the consequences of this. Um, and we see the consequences of it. We have kids killing themselves because they're online bullied. There are people who don't want to speak up because they're afraid of people commenting how they look, their appearance. Um, so seriously, <laughs> if your goal is to make me feel uh, ashamed of myself or giving someone an eating disorder, you're a fucking asshole. So um, my goal is to <laughs> Oh, this is so pageant. Make the world a better place. Um, but I, and hopefully make people love themselves. Um, no matter how they look and with every flaw, I say flaw like this, you don't have any flaws, um, that they might have. Um, and I don't think it's about being beautiful, but since that's so important in our society, it's about feeling beautiful. Um, and have fun with your body. Mm. <laughs> Um, your body is, com is so complex, it can do so much, um, and therefore uh, the Norwegian Eating Disorder Association and I started our project, hashtag Beyond Body. Uh, you can read more about it online, I have very limited time. Um, but basically we want picture people to take pictures, take a selfie, um, upload it on Instagram, hashtag Beyond Body, and brag about yourself, brag about what you can do. You know, everyone... Mm, Feel empowered. I also started something called 365 Body Myths, um, or Kroppsmyter, as it's called in Norwegian, because there's so many stupid body myths. Um, one example is that chubby girls give better head because they're always hungry. <laughs> and I'm sorry to tell you guys, but when I'm hungry, <laughs> sucking dick is the last thing on my mind. <laughs> um, 
So in this project, I have to break a myth every day. Uh, this can be anything. Like the other day, I had a post about men and penis sizes. I mean, big and small, we want them all. Um, yesterday, I talked about the fact that women actually does poo. Um, and today, I think, I think I'll say something about how the society wants to tell us that only skinny, pretty, and young people are having sex. Uh, or is allowed to have sex. I mean, yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I've also walked around in shorts, light-colored clothes, and I wore a bikini at the beach. Um, fat people can't ride a bike is one other. No. <laughs> and, um, yeah, fat people can't be naked. So I went to Jotunheimen and walked around naked. It was fucking freezing. <laughs> um, ponytails. Fat people can't wear ponytails. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I did all these things. I'm, I think I'm at day 86 today. And you know what? I've survived so far. So, so can you. You'll survive. And then the next one. Uh, my message to you all is quite easy. Uh, first of all, don't be a fucking asshole. Um, and don't wait for someone to give you permission to feel great. But if you do, I'll give you that permission right now. So just feel fantastic. Go out and get them. Thank you.